Liz, Moira, Stuart, even the uncle showed up today. <laughs> and we say amen. amen. Um, Liu Temba Sabado. we cannot be in one big room but we praise God that we are all here to witness this. I'm so delighted because many years ago I did not understand the meaning of baby dedication. But by faith my wife and I took our children to the Lord in prayer to be the faith of the Lord. As I've said before, not to any point, but to make a point. Those that my wife and I and the pastor and the church at that time dedicated to the Lord, they brought me to church today, and they are with us today, they are with me today, and I'm so delighted that they can also witness this baby dedication. Baby dedication works. It does. I don't want to go into the preaching of about the baby dedication, but allow me to share with you this story. The words of Jesus Christ from the book of Mark chapter, Mark chapter 10, verse 13, all the way through verse 16. I'll read the narrative like this. Then Jesus, or oh Jesus blesses the little children, that's how it begins. Verse 
16 says, Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. In other words, those who brought the children. But when Jesus saw it, whatever Jesus saw, but he saw something. When Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Verse 16 says, And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. That's what Jesus did. Now, listen to this, this thing that I saw. In verse 14, Jesus says something. Jesus does something. Jesus reacts a little differently against the attitude of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Against the gesture of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Against the display of negativity on the part of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Because this is this what happened. When these men and women were bringing their children to Jesus for the purpose that Jesus might touch them. Just amazing. They brought their children, those little boys, those little girls, so that Jesus might touch them. Because I think in my mind that these mothers, these fathers, when they look at Jesus, they look at Jesus as a source of blessing, as a source of peace, as someone who was kind of unique. And they wanted Jesus just to touch them. And we commend your parents today, my brothers and my sisters. Jesus will not be here present in terms of will not be here in terms of physical presence. But by faith we believe that. God is with us and that we are not alone. Allow me to read these few words also. These are not my words. I read them from the book called Desire for Ages, page 5, 1, 12. It's a small little paragraph. The title is, Jesus will help weary mothers. Let mothers come to Jesus with their perplexities. They will find grace sufficient to aid them in the management of their children. The gates are open for every mother who would lay her burdens at the Savior's feet. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from his birth. If we will live in communion with God, we too may expect the divine spirit to mold our little ones, even from the earliest moments. While it is okay to leave our children with nannies, with uh, nurses, with uh, maids, and all those kinds of people that help us to do the work of raising our children. But our maids are not made to be the substitute. They cannot substitute the work of the mother, the work of the father. We are still responsible for our children. In fact, we as parents, we cannot relegate our responsibility as parents to find our children to our teachers in the schools, in the kindergartens, in the high schools, hoping that they don't mold the character of our children to completion. It doesn't work that way. We would like to remind us that you have already started a good job. Please keep on doing that. Say a little prayer. Say a little prayer in the morning, a little prayer in the evening. Reading God's word for them, it goes a long, long, long way. Normally, in a dedication service, normally, the pastor or the minister or the handbook would carry the children one by one to make sure that we say a blessing for all of them. And sometimes the elders also would help us. But today allow us to be a little different. Just allow us to be a little different. We have to ask the parents to hold their own children. I think we're not offending you, we're not offending the church. 
we are simply doing what is needful at this right time, at this moment. Please, you are going to forgive us on that element. We wish we could do the needful, like carrying the, the children one by one, one by one. But we're going to do that for you for, for today. But we're going to say a blessing for each one of them. I let me do this one thing if I can. On the certificates, there are certificates that Mama has the certificates the way names are. I won't read them one by one. If I can do that. I'll, when, once I read them, I'll give it, I'll give them back to you. Uh, I would like to remind us as parents 
Uh, if you can just turn around, please, just for a moment. Uh, just for a moment. I would like to remind us parents that we still have a great responsibility. Where there is a Christian school, take them to a Christian school. I know there's a little battle there that, you know, sometimes Christian schools don't provide what we want, that's fine. But Christian schools sometimes don't only, they're not only in a building, sometimes some place, but Christian education is in the home. There is a big school at home. Create space for them, teach them, train them, homeschool them, not in terms of only for them to learn English and um, Portuguese and uh, Spanish and uh, whatever language, not only just for sciences, but great space for them to know the will of God. You never make a mistake to use the Bible as well as the textbook for them to, to help them read, to help them, to help them understand. Never make a mistake. Religious education does not have in the classroom block somewhere, someplace. Religious education, Christian education takes place in the home. Continue to do that. You've already started doing the work. Keep on doing it. May God continue to bless you. You can press the church again and uh, continue. Thank you. Welcome. 